the number four seeds. Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang from China up against Nezaki Matsutomo and Aika Takahashi from Japan. So for the Japanese pair, this will be their first match in the Super Series finals because, of course, their match that was supposed to take place yesterday evening against the number two seeds, Um Heiwan and Zhang Yena of Korea never happened because of the injury to Zhang Yena. So for the Japanese pair, the, their first match in this year's Super Series finals, in fact, their first match in Super Series finals because this is their first appearance in this particular event. And that's despite the fact that last year they finished the Super Series ranking at number eight, but they were the fourth Japanese player. Now, isn't that an indication of how well women's doubles are doing and how well the Japanese team support the Super Series? Well, of course, even this year, the Japanese pair were only the third ranked Japanese pair at number nine at the end of year Super Series ranking. But of course, sadly, because the number five ranked pair, Maeda and Suetsuna, unable to come here to Shenzhen. It means that we're delighted to see Matsutomo and Takahashi instead. And always very nice when a player or a pair can't attend that the next pair on the list is compatriots. Oh, isn't that particularly fitting? So the Japanese pair never actually won a Super Series tournament and they're confirming that they were number nine at the end of the year. In fact, their world ranking has gone down one place from their highest ever at seven, now down to number eight. They have won two titles this year. That was the US Grand Prix and the Indonesian Grand Prix, but I guess their most memorable victory, I say victory, performance, I should say, this year was reaching the final of the premier events in Denmark. So to Yu Young, well, the 26-year-old from Liaoning, like Liaoning province, former Olympic champion. And of course, there is her partner, 23-year-old Wang Xiaoli from Hubei. And of course, not only the, the Olympic champions, I, I beg your pardon, the world champions, they were the favorites for the Olympics, but of course, got disqualified from the event and it's been well documented what happened there. One previous meeting between these two pairs. That was the quarterfinal stage of the China Super Series, which Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang went on to win. And that, of course, the China Open was the first tournament that the Chinese pair played since their disqualification from the Olympics. But it really is quite remarkable that they are here in these Super Series finals because they've only played five Super Series events throughout the year and yet they're ranked number six on the Super Series ranking list and they were the third Chinese pair. But the number two pair. Yes, we just listened to the announcements from Paraika Anderson. So this women's doubles encounter from Group A, both these pairs benefiting from the withdrawal or injury woes from compatriots not able to take part in the Super Series finals because, as I was just about to tell you, Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang took the place in essence of Bao Yixin and Zhong Xianxin. Zhong Xianxin, of course, is injured and therefore because they were in the top eight in the world this chinese combination they got promoted to the second chinese pair and therefore invited to participate in these finals now obviously steen i don't want to go over old ground um no point in doing that but this chinese combination well they were really quite a phenomenon in the build-up to the Olympic Games. You think back to last year, 
2011, they played 13 tournaments. They reached 13 finals, winning nine of them. In fact, prior to the Olympic Games, since forming their partnership, they played 21 individual tournaments and reached 19 finals. The only two losses prior to the final was one when they had to retire injured in the very first round of the tournament, and the only other occasion was the semi-final of the Korean Open. So they were overwhelming favourites for the Olympic Games. This lady, of course, announced her retirement after the disqualification from the London Olympics. For all the rights and wrongs, and we're not going to go there, I don't want to discuss that, from a badminton enthusiast point of view, I'm delighted to see such a world-class pair back in world badminton. Yeah, definitely, and especially Yu Yang, who's um, clearly the best ladies doubles player in the world at the moment. Um, she was reigning uh, Olympic champion yeah. with uh, Du Jing. And um, yeah, the Olympics called for some research, and, and this pairing has uh, only lost to one non-Chinese pair ever yeah. in their career and only once so yeah. uh, whenever they play their heavy favorites um, it seems like um, the current Olympic champions Zhao Yonlei and uh, Cheng Chen they, um, they, they can actually match them at the moment and, and play uh, and play equal matches against them and also um, I was very happy to see this Japanese player play, play uh, three sets um, in, in China Open. So, of course, um, Yu Yang and, and Wang Xiaoli, they, they set the standards for ladies' doubles. And yeah. then it's up to all the other players to, to, follow, to follow suit and, and, and improve the game. Yeah. I'm not sure I agree on one of the points you've just made, and that is that... I actually rate Wang Xiao Li more than I rate Yu Young. I think she's a more creative player. Of course, when we watch them as a partnership, I think so many of the rallies are finished off by this lady, Yu Young, at the front of the court. Yeah. And therefore, our attention gets drawn to her and the fact that she appears to be playing very well, which, of course, she is because she's finishing off the rally. But I think the player that's creating the opportunities is her partner, Wang Xiao Li. And that's why I rate her even higher. Yeah, you might be right, and, and there's been some speculations. Uh, I guess it's one or two years ago that um, that she was playing really well with uh, Majin. Yeah. In uh, the team tournaments in, in China, well in they the provinces. Were, well they were world number ones together. Yeah. Majin and Wang Xiaoli. So, um, so uh, it's definitely uh, an argu a valid argument that... Uh, she could be regarded as the yeah. best lady doubles player, and she's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah, the hardest smash, I think, probably in the women's game. They're starting out at a high level, the Chinese. It's not like they uh, take it lightly. They don't want to play more games than absolutely necessary. at the mid-game interval. Well, we've talked an awful lot about the Chinese, this Japanese pair. I suppose they, in some respects, 
tend to go under the radar, don't they? Because with two Japanese pairs, well, three Japanese pairs, I mean, we haven't seen Fuji and Kikiwa since their uh, Olympic silver medal, apart from in their home events at the Japan Open, where I think they lost their first match, if I remember correctly. But uh, anyway, I mean, we've got Suitsuna and uh, Maeda, and then we've got the other Japanese pair here as well, which we saw, of course, uh, yesterday of Lani Nato and uh, Matsuo, who are the number one seeds. And so, of course, this pair tend to be overlooked, but they are a very, very fine women's doubles pair. They are, and, and, and they're they're young. They're only, um, what, what, are they, what are their ages? Um, 20 and 22. Uh, yeah. Matsuo and Mo is the younger of the two. So it's interesting to see if they can uh, if they can uh, be even better than, than the Japanese pairings that we've seen uh, at the moment. Of course, uh, the ones that you've mentioned sort of um, got to the world top on, on defensive uh, qualities. Will this pair be able to, to imply a, a more attacking style? Because then they have the possibility of, of uh, reaching an even higher level than we've seen so far. Yeah, I think that's a very, very good point. And I think, I, I don't know if they're injured, the Japanese players, but I, I talked to um, the Danish ladies double, Christina Pedersen and Camilla Yule, and they said that they saw the entry for the Korean Open, and, and it had um, Maeda playing with uh, Raiki Kikiva, and that um, Mitsuki was injured, and she was going to study, and Suetsuna was uh, sort of on her way out the way they saw it so it'll be interesting to, to see that in, in the future uh, tournaments well going back to your point about some of the other japanese pairs being perhaps in my opinion a little too defensive in their style of play i think that's one of the reasons why as a lover of badminton i'm happy that this chinese pair are back because they play an aggressive attacking style of game and if they're having success at that style then i think the rest of the world badminton women's doubles pairs will have to follow yeah. and to me it's a much more exciting game to watch it's a much more positive game entertaining game to watch when you see women's doubles players trying to attack and trying to be positive rather than just trying to defend their way and outlast physically their opponents yeah i totally agree and and um, we have to understand the japanese because they, they win the way they have a possibility of winning so so that's fine with me no problem at all but but it's just more exciting watching uh, the Chinese ladies double, even yeah. if it's two Chinese ladies doubles playing against each other, because it's like I hear a lot of comments uh, in, in Denmark that, oh, we don't want to watch uh, two Chinese ladies doubles play each other. It's boring and so on. And, and I feel that that then we have to educate yes. <laughs> the, the audience so they uh, appreciate world-class badminton because if it was two american uh, tennis players they would happily watch them play yeah so uh, if we look at the skills these players they, they are extraordinary players they yep. uh, they bring in uh, memories of uh, Gifei and Gujun who was totally dominant uh, back in the uh, early uh, uh, the late 90s so it is actually fun watching ladies topple yeah and here, here. Well said, Steen. And you can see just by the, by this rally here that they they try things. The Japanese girls, of course, they can defend. Unless you can defend, you cannot play ladies doubles. But the key is, are you just defending or are you once in a while trying to make creative shots to set up opportunities for you or your partner? And if you're doing that, that's, that's really all I ask. Yeah.
Oh, perfect. Just Both the Japanese players leaving it to the other. Yeah, just a little deception, and, and she's threatening with her big smash, so they have to move a little bit backwards in, in order to being able to return that and excellent drop shot. Tried it again, this time found the net. But that's the creativity that I was trying to explain earlier that I love about Wang Xiao Li. Yeah, and, and, and the, the young ladies that was playing throughout the world, they need these kind of role models. They need yeah. to see that strokes are to be carried out this way. If, if you go back um, quite a number of years, Perhaps a lot of people <laughs> are too young to remember that, but but then there was this perception that it was okay for girls not to hold the correct grip on the racket, and, and that changed when South Korea emerged on the international scene, and, and when the Chinese came, we found out that there wasn't any um, reason why girls should not be able to play the same kind of strokes as boys did. Yeah. You must be older than me because I never played in badminton without the Chinese and the Koreans. They were always around when I was around. Yeah, but, um, I remember um, when uh, Lena Coppen was playing. She was perhaps one of the, uh, the players with the most incorrect grip, but still working. And the emergence of uh, a Korean player called Sunai Huang totally changed the. Um, the perception of badminton beating Lena Coppen 11-1, 11-2, and that was so unheard of that uh, everybody said she played like a boy, and, and she had technique like a boy, and, and that was good. Why shouldn't she? Yeah, I can think of a certain world number one tennis player from Belgium who uh, had a backhand that John McEnroe described as the best backhand in the whole of tennis, and he included all of the men. There's no yeah. reason technically why female athletes cannot technically hit the same way a shuttlecock as the men do. Maybe not as hard, but technically there's no reason. Look at that, that oh, is brilliant. Christine Anen, of course, is the tennis player to which I refer. Game points already. time of asking and they duly convert 21 9 confirms the umpire and that impressive play by the world champions just 14 minutes Short coaching. Yeah, no need to say an awful lot. Playing so well, seem to be so much in command.
have to say I'm a little bit concerned about the Japanese pair and their body language. We've already made the point that the Chinese coach, quick words, not much to say. Come on, girls, keep doing the same thing. You're playing very well. You know the tactics. Keep implementing, whereas the Japanese pair, the coach having to work a lot, lot harder, staying with the players for much longer. But in that two-minute timeout, I have to say, both Matsutomo and Takahashi bent over double, heads bowed down low, didn't really look as if they had the belief. The Chinese were totally in control in, in all of the first game and um, it must feel a little bit like starting all over. Now the Japanese get to play into the wind and they, they should try to make use of that moving forward close to the net and they're putting a bit more pressure on the Chinese offense I don't think they should play uh, attacking but they should uh, put more pressure on their, uh, their defensive shots so the Chinese don't have too much time and a little bit forward so that the pickups can be more flat instead of going this just a tiny tiny bit upwards and doesn't really get them out of this defensive situation well put away from Wang Xiao Li well I know in the opening game Wang Xiao Li hit a smash at 2.33 kilometers an hour that's about 145 miles per hour when you consider Venus Williams fastest ever tennis serve was 209 actually 30 miles per hour just shows how hard these players hit the shuttle It's not just the power, is it? It's the fact that from that base position, she's leapt to the side. One movement to play that smash and then plays the perfect placement of the smash. Yeah, it's so easy to, to try and hit it harder than you actually need to and, and then make a mistake. Either hit the net or, or uh, play it long over the baseline. service a bit short but I, I like that because it was putting pressure on on you young and if she choose to attack then it might create a counter-attacking possibility for the Japanese girls and getting the right length on the lift there at home you can you can watch the players feet if the opponent has the right length on the lifts and the clears uh, at least one feet should touch the first baseline when they're hitting their shots otherwise it's too short Service return here from uh, Young. I actually feel that um, 
it would be uh, an advantage in ladies doubles to use a lot more quick serve you just need to practice it so it has the right height and the right length uh, because it's a vulnerable situation if you're not serving really really well Look how easy the Chinese got the initiative there and lost it again but um, put a lot of pressure on the service return on Shaoli And, and just standing, uh, smashing, attacking at the two Chinese players when they are perfectly well balanced in the defense, that's hopeless. That's not going to make you any points. Oh, he's pushed behind and long. It, it just seems to me as if the Japanese pair have run out of ideas. It's, it's almost as if they're sort of saying to themselves, oh, well, we've tried that, that hasn't worked. We've tried this and that hasn't worked either. Yeah. yeah way too short yeah they're not really back to their match fitness yet I and mean, a real peak of their capabilities the Chinese pair the best the only their seventh tournament individual tournament in a year Now it's the possibility. No, it's gone. They're standing on the middle of the court, the Japanese girls, and as long as the Chinese players are in, in full balance in the defensive positions, they are unable to kill it. That's a big chance. Oh, goodness. And it's a squandered chance. She was literally half court with the shuttle up in the air. Look where her feet are. And drops the shuttle into the net. Yeah, no wonder he's looking disappointed. Look at the body language of the two Japanese players there. One hand on hip, yeah. Well, both hands on hips now. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's 9-7 in the second game. They're still, they're still in it. So um, even if they don't believe they can win, they should still play for, for development, for learning how to beat these two Chinese girls and sort of developing their own uh, playing style. So no reason to... Um, to feel sad or, or disappointed yet. No, but an awful lot of sport is about kidology as well, isn't it? And yeah. I mean, even if you don't believe you can win, the golden rule of sport is never let your opponent see that. Yeah. You put on a persona, you still look with your body language as if there's belief. And, and certainly as a, when I was an athlete myself, I did always believe. Yeah. There's always a chance absolutely and you're not always even if you're still um, doing your best you're not always making a success and winning and turning the match around but you're doing it far more often than if you just give in and say oh let's yeah. go home to the hotel because yeah. you're never going to do it then yeah start all over yes Two Chinese girls here. The channel attack down the centre of the court narrows the angle of reply. And look, their attacking play, once they got on the attack, was just relentless.
little hand signal as always from Wu Young. She's looking her part, I know where she's going to serve. Oh, my goodness, look at that. Some really good defense from uh, Matsutomo and Takahashi, and, and then suddenly they lifted very high. That was there, and that high lift gave Wang Xiaoli just enough time to use her powerful smash. Until then, in, in the rally, they'd been putting a lot of pressure on, on the uh, Chinese girls. They didn't have exactly the, the same amount of time to to swing the shoulders to move the body. And they weren't able to kill it on the Japanese until they were given a little bit too much time. Well, look, there's some running repairs going on here. More strapping on the wrist. That can come loose. More strapping on the knee. And there's, been, uh, there's been some players stating that um, the schedule of tournaments and uh, both the, uh, the Super Series and the... Uh, the medal tournaments, the Sudirman Cup, the Thomas Cup, the Olympics, that, it, that it's a, uh, a tight schedule. And, and he could agree with them that there should be a month or so that should be reserved for uh, rehabilitation and preparing for the new season. It is a tough, it is a tough year. Yeah, that said, uh, I know this Chinese pair have been off the circuit for for obvious reasons uh, since the Olympic Games, but this is only their seventh individual tournament of the year. You compare that with the tennis players. Men's tennis players have to play a minimum of 19 tournaments a year. Yeah. I yep. mean, it, it, and you consider that the majors, four times a year, the top tennis players are playing for two weeks. Okay, they have a day off because they, they play a match and then they don't play the next day and then they play the following day and so it progresses through the two weeks of the tournament. But it's two weeks of intensity. We only ever have... Um, Five days. Yeah, for individual yeah. tournaments. But I think actually the players could, could easily play more as long as we, uh, we put time for rehabilitation in. Yes. Let's say that in December we don't play any tournaments. Yeah. We start in late January again. Then you have a season end. You have a uh, holiday possibility, and you can uh, you can get over all your small injuries and, and um, yeah. can prepare well for the new season. Then we can play a lot of tournaments. Yeah. Now I'm sure there's an awful lot of players that would agree with you on that, and that it does seem a sensible way to progress in the future. But at the moment, Chinese pair on a real roll. Seven straight points. Oh, look at that. It's great vision. Yeah. And there's no easy points for the Japanese. No, you thought at 10 8. Perhaps one is coming now. Yeah. As to the yeah. commentator's curse, but. Uh, yeah. They have to work really hard for every point. Yes, there it was. That was the easy one. already just over the 30 minute mark
the world champions, the two-time defending champions of the Super Series Finals title, Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang. Hugely popular here in China. And they've really given us a demonstration today of how women's doubles should be played. 21-9, 21-9. In 31 minutes. Fantastic display by Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang. And there you can see played 2 1 2. And because the Koreans have withdrawn from this group, that confirms that the world champions, the defending champions of this title, are definitely in the semi final. Because only two matches to be contested for each pair, with only three pairs now taking part in a group at B. So played two, one, two, and uh, Yu Young and Wang Xiao Li top group at B. It will be a battle tomorrow.